Welcome YouTubers, this is Earl from Virginia. I'm recording here today to try to get some help to figure out a positive ID and a couple pieces that I found at a farm site that I go hunting at up in Brucetown. Uh, here's the first pitch of it. Actually it's a heavy brass piece and it's cast brass and let me show you a couple pictures first. Alright, this site here, this is a spot where it was located and just adjacent to it there's a nice big hole which I believe the dirt has been removed out of here and deposited in another place. The reason I show you that is because there's a second find that's similar to this one, actually identical to it, that I believe came out of the, the dirt that was the spool from this area right here. My find was here and in addition to it was a shankle shell percussion uh, fuse. I'll show you both of them here in a second. Just to give you an idea, here's the site that was dug, the, the, the objects in question were dug. The area that I dug it at was actually right on the right hand side of the, the house. This at the time was the front of the house. Now today since remodeling the front has been moved to the front. But at the time of the, of the Civil War this would have been the front of the house facing, uh, facing uh, due east which uh, at the base of the hill, there's a hill that drops off to the right of it. The base of the hill is actually the Peckham Creek. Nearby is a large, uh, large camp and a railroad crossing and trestle that was also there period during the war. This house could have very possibly, I know it's occupied by the North the Union Army, but it could very possibly have been some Confederate activity here as well. Once again, the location of the pieces of mystery were on this side, just about 20 yards off to the right of the house. In, uh, once again, in, right here. And the second piece that I'm going to show you, I believe, was dug from the residual dirt that came out of here. All right, I'm going to show you the parts real quick. <clears throat> Here's the pieces in question. There's actually three of them. All three were dug at the same farm site. The first one I dug uh, was this piece here. It's a pretty cool piece. It's heavy cast brass. I tried weighing it, so it's slightly less than a pound. Uh, just show you some dimensions of it. What's really weird is these two holes that have been drilled in the top. And side view. They're quite heavy, and as you can tell, the brass is quite thick and uh, the material is quite thick. I'll give you an idea on the dimensions. I don't know if this shows up or not, but it's about two and three eighths in width. I mean, I'm sorry, in length. And it's about an inch and seven eighths in diameter. The second piece I'm going to show you is actually about three inches in width. And it is two and a half in length. This piece very similar to the first. It's got a hole drilled in the top too. Very thick cast brass as well. Side view, if you notice the grooves in the bottom, looks like it was a retainer strap or something went in. And if you look closely, you can't see it in this film, but it's got some silver wash on it. And then the third piece, identical to the first. Cast brass. This one's got a different patina because it was found along the, uh, the floodplain of the creek. But I believe this is what came out of the residual dirt that was dug in that hole. Now, what's very interesting is if you take these two, place them together to make a channel. So, my thoughts are a couple things. These are identical. I'm pretty sure they're a matching pair just like this. My thoughts are possibly a caisson, caisson or an artillery wagon or even a possibly a artillery piece, the wheel axle, 
There's a, a buffer or something that goes on the axle, surrounds the axle between the wheel and the axle. Or it could actually be some kind of pipe coupling, I'm not sure which. But that's what I'm looking for, some information, any ideas, what you guys think it would be. Same thing here. This is a bigger piece if you compare it to the other two. It's a bigger piece, but they're all solid cast brass. Very similar in designs. All right. Looking for thoughts. What do you think? The other cool thing about it is this piece here and this piece here, I, I believe in DIV uh, 5, which is uh, just east of the Farley House on the lane to the right of the Farley House, there was one dug at DIV 5, and I think it resembled this in here closely. Or I can't remember if it had actually had holes in it or not. And also at Digging in Virginia 8, DIV 8, which is back at the Farley House again, right along that lane again. There was a second piece found, two separate hunts, but uh, the same location. So at the DIV event at Brandy Rock, right next to the Farley House along the lane, there was two of these dug there as well, which kind of helps me believe it. it's definitely in the Civil War period. The question is, what was the function? What could it possibly have been? A few other things that are found at this site. Uh, this shankle shell fuse actually was dug about a foot away from this first piece, which these two here, these two pieces here were dug uh, within a minute or two of each other in the same spot. And I'll, I'll go back to that picture and show you where my shovel was at. They were both dug within a foot of each other. Some other cool pieces. Of course, I told you the railroad track was nearby. An old railroad spike. A uh, big old Civil War spoon. Uh, here, the shankle fuse. This is actually a uh, shell frag off a of shankle shell. It was dug about in between with the, with the first, uh, the third piece, and the, and the first piece were found. And a Borman ball. I think it was a 10 inch Borman or 8 inch, somewhere in that size. A big old frag off a of Borman ball it was also found down the same area that I was hunting. Old iron buckle. Not too sure what this object is either. Kind of reminds me of a salt shaker, decorative salt shaker or something, but when you look at the wheel cog, it's some kind of a gear cog, some form or fashion. And Cro excuse me. Croatian bell. That was pretty cool. Off a horse harness. That was dug in the front where the old front door used to be, right not too far from it. And a few other miscellaneous lead pieces. One other thing was found here. Uh, I'll show you. Here's the shankle shell just after being dug. It actually had on it, it had shankle and it had a date on it, but immediately right after removing for dirt, it literally just powderized and just fell off there. So it's no longer visible. Another shot of the shell. It was actually snowing. There was snow on the ground that day that I dug it. So I laid this one on the ground immediately after pulling out the dirt. And here's the hole. There's actually actually the shankle shell in the hall. And uh, again, the location of the dig, just uh, on the east, uh, excuse me, on the north side of the house that I showed you earlier. Here's a, a dugout area. Could have possibly been an artillery burn, but I'm pretty sure the dirt that came out of here was deposited down along the riverbank on the uh, east slope of the house is where I dug a second brass piece in question. Uh, again, a few photos of the house that I was digging at. This is uh, prior to the owner buying the property. This house actually been abandoned from like the 1920s until he bought it somewhere in 79, I think it was. And just a few pictures of that. That was the house when he first started remodeling and the right wing was remodeled. He actually now has a second wing on the right. And this house has been restored beautifully. It's, it's an awesome place. I don't have a picture of the current residence. But when he purchased it, the uh, the north and south wings had caved in, and he had to clear all that out. He dug out a basement from underneath, and then, uh, oh, by the way, this buckle was also dug in the same property. It was dug on the west side in what looked to be about a servant's quarters. It was pretty mangled, and then from those of you all know Robert McDaniel, he did a repair. This is actually the plate prior to repair. I sent it off to Robert McDaniel. And this is his repair. He left some of the creases in there by my wish and by what he thought as well. Instead of doing a full repair, he had to do a lot of stretching, slightly elongated on the right-hand side. 
but we left some of the creases in to represent what it was. This is the back. It still did have the arrow hook uh, attachments and the main hook and the arrow, arrow points. And that's a side profile. The recurve he's got back in it. So this is Earl signing out. And if you guys can help me at all, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye.